Glory be to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to learn at your feet once again. Lord, as we go into your word this time, we pray that you will speak to our hearts, bless us through your words, and at the end of our race, please help us to reign with you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Welcome to another episode of Bible Lessons. As we study together, I want you to relax and be ready to gain something valuable from the Lord. Revelation chapter 3, I will read verse 11. Revelation chapter 3, I will read verse 11. Behold, I come quickly, O that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. It's one of the letters written to uh, the churches. Uh, that's the church in Philadelphia. And um, it's saying, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast. The emphasis or our focus in this study is um, hold that fast. There will always be something to hold. And uh, you must ask yourself and say, What exactly am I holding on to? Some people are holding on to, gr holding on to grudges, resentment, hatred, complaint. Um, lukewarmness, all manner of negative things. You will always have something to hold. So if you are not intentional in trying to determine what you want to hold, something else will just be found in your hands. There are times that even those things that are found in your hands, if later discovered, you will want to deny it and say, no, when did I get this? You might not actually go for it might not be as if you requested for those things. But because you are not holding on to the right thing, those things can easily fix in. Remember Hebrew chapter uh, 12 that says, there are sins that easily beset ones. You are not calling for them. They are just, they are just ready. And when you, get the, you have the requirement, the requirement to hold on to negative things, is not to hold on to the positive. And what is that thing that we are supposed to hold on to? Here, let's look at, go back to verse 8 of Revelation chapter 3. Verse 8 says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength. We want to look at three things that this church in Philadelphia has. Three things, three things. And uh, what was discovered about the church? What is that thing that will be seen that you have? What is that thing that you are holding on to that God is seeing? You know, at times, what God is seeing in our hands is different from what men are seeing. So, little strength, number one. Number two, and has kept my word, the word of God, number two. And number three, and has not denied my name. They were holding on to the name of Jesus. Now let's speak strength. Strength. Strength is synonymous to joy. Because the Bible says uh, in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 8 uh, verse 10. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. So strength is equal to joy. Now, when we talk about joy, the Bible says in the book of Psalm 16, verse 11, that in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. So, you see that the presence of God, you get fullness of joy. And when you have joy, you have strength. That's why at times when there is no joy within, you experience weariness, weakness. You experience, you know, as if there is nothing you can do again. And the, the, what determines what you will do in the kingdom is the amount of strength that you have. And the strength we are talking about is not human strength because the Bible says by strength shall no man prevail. But you need the strength. So where do we draw strength from? From the joy of the Lord. How can we experience this joy? How can we operate in this joy when we carry the presence of God? And you know the presence of God cannot stay where sin is. The presence of God 
cannot be found where there are iniquities. The presence of God cannot be found where there are hatred, where there are resentment. For us to have more of God's presence, we must live a holy life. We must live a life that is consecrated unto God. We must live a life for God and for God alone. We must shun every form of selfish interest. We must not be living by our own uh, dictates or mandate. We must live by the ordinance of God. And we, by this, you attract the presence of God. When there is presence of God, of God, we have joy. And when there is joy, automatically you have strength. What you are feeling is joy. But what you will see, the result is that you see that you begin to get things done. Because joy comes with strength. Joy is the same thing as strength. So the church in Philadelphia, they add little strength. The Bible says this will hold on to it. Hold on to that strength. You know where you can get the strength from. Hold on to it because you need it. There will be a time when what you need to conquer, to move to the next level, is that strength that is coming from the joy of the Lord. Yes. There is no battle you cannot conquer when you carry God's presence. Because God's presence gives fullness of joy. And fullness of joy will give you strength. Are you facing difficulties? Does it, uh, are, are you facing challenges? Maybe in your marriage, maybe in your home, maybe with your children, in your career. Please go for the presence of God. When you get the presence of God, at that level, you have the fullness of joy. And with that fullness of joy, you have the strength to prevail. You have the strength, not your own strength, not strength given by men. You know, there is this strength that comes from men's, uh, the encouragement that we receive from people. They say, just don't worry this. And it seems as if you are relieved a bit. But the, in the real battle of life, you need more than this. You need the one that is coming from the one that holds the whole world in its end. The next thing that was found uh, with this church is that they were asked to hold on to what they have. And what is that thing that they have? Of course, the church had the word of God. He said, as kept the word. Psalm 119 verse 11 said, Thy word have I eat in my heart that I might not sin against you. So when you keep the word, hold on to the word, hold on to the word. These are the things that everyone will see and respond and, and move towards to your direction. We need the word of God because Jesus is the word. In John chapter 1 verse 1, with the word of God, you are able to defeat every attempt of the kingdom of darkness. The word of God will propel you to take the right step. The word of God will give you direction. The word of God will, will, will make you to get to that level of maturity. All this tribe and error, and error that we are doing, when we are loaded with the word, we know the exact thing to do. At times you want to do certain things, you are saying, oh God, forgive me if this thing I'm about to do is a sin. Because you lack the word, you can't even differentiate between what God wants and what he hates. Go for the word. Hold on to it. Find the word. Hold the word. Sometimes it's not as if we have not found the word, but we are not holding on to it. We found the word, but we are holding on to something else. Sometimes it's very easy for us to hold on to the word of men rather than holding on to the word of God. The word of God that you are holding on to is the one that can take you to the end. If you hold on to something else that is not the word of God, you know, the word of God is just like the, the, the button in the hands of a runner. You know, if you are given a button and you throw it aside and you pick a wood and you are running, even if you are the first to get to the finish line, you will be disqualified because the button that was given to you at first is not the one that you took to the finish line. So what are you going to take to the finish line? What you need to take to the finish line is the word of God. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. You know, the book of, uh, the book of uh, John chapter 6 verses 3 says that the word has spoken unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Be a word keeper. Keep the word. Hold on to the word. Hold on to the word. Hold on to the strength. Hold on to your word. And uh, I mean the word of God. And the third thing that you have to hold on to is that you should keep the name of Jesus. The Bible says the name of Jesus is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. 
hold on to the name of Jesus. It sounds so simple because many are calling it in vain and they are not getting results. But this name is powerful. This name, the, the, the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 verse 12 that neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby men I mean, we must be saved. This name is the only name that has the authority, the license to save. If you run to another name, you might get fame, you might get not, uh, noticed, but you may not last. For run to last and to finish well and to reign with Christ. Don't forget, heaven is our goal. Whatever you are doing here on earth that is not leading you to heaven, it's like wasting your life, wasting your time. So these three things you must hold tightly. You must hold it firmly. Hold on to the strength that you derive from the joy of the Lord. And hold on to the word of God. Hold on to the word of God. Many are deceived today because they lack the word. This one will come and say, this is what you should do. You go after it. Another will come and say, this is what you do. You go after it. When you have the word, it will become very easy for you to pray. Because what are you praying about? You are praying with his word. The word of God that is in you will propel you to pray. When you see that you are not praying the way you are supposed to pray, you lack the word. The name of Jesus. Uh, when the name of Jesus is in you, you want to defend the interest of Jesus. You are running away from what Jesus likes because you are not holding on to the name. It is not about your title. Hold on to the name. Stop holding on to your achievement because, by the way, there is nothing you can achieve here on earth without God doing it through you. By the time we begin to hold on to these things, what people will see is one word, faith. 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 That's one word for it. These three things I've explained. Strength, um, the word of God, and the name of Jesus. One word that, is, uh, that, is, uh, that can be used to wrap all these things is faith. Because the Bible says faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing the word of God. So which means when you have the word, you have faith. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. So when you please God, you have faith. And when you please God, you have his presence. You have access to his presence. So, so you need, it, it takes faith to even believe in Jesus. It takes faith to hold on to the name of Jesus. Jesus is coming to meet faith. Luke chapter 18 verse 8. When he returns, will he find faith here on earth? What are you holding on to? Please go for joy. Go for strength. Go for the word. And hold on to the name of Jesus. And the Lord will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. There are a lot of things to hold on to here on earth. If you are not ready to hold on to these things. Some, they are, they are very easy. But at long run, you discover that they are not easy. Because the, the result will always be negative. At long run. But when you hold on to the name of Jesus, the word of God, and then you hold on to the presence of God, where strength can be produced, where strength can be manufactured. You see, the presence of God is the raw material by which we can produce strength. And you know what? The strength of yesterday might not be sufficient to face the battles of today. So, which means the more of the presence of God you have, the more strength you have to solve the immediate battle. To, solve, to attend to the immediate need. And I pray the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your word you sent, sent to us this time. We ask, O oh God, that you give us the grace to hold on to our strength that, uh, that was manufactured or that is being manufactured on daily basis from your presence. Uh, we'll be able to hold on to your word. We'll be able to hold on to the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For as many listening to me now that are far from Jesus, I pray even as they confess their sins unto you, that you will come into their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God bless you for listening. See you next week. By God's grace.